So here is a reporting example. Uh, imagine it could be your company, but here is a fictive company, one of the sample contents I mentioned. Uh, this fictive company is manufacturing company and it tracks uh, their standards based on United Nations goals, GRI, Green Gas uh, Protocol, and uh, uh, what, what else that they have um, manufacturing data live. They have digital drill of their manufacturing, meaning they track data live. And as you can see, they are um, producing two products, standard and premium axle shafts. They follow manufacturing data alongside with uh, carbon emissions, meaning sustainability data. That's what I was talking about, that it's important to integrate uh, your other data other than sustainability to your sustainability report. That's how you get uh, best benefit. So uh, in this reporting, we have maps uh, and we can see that we have like uh, three manufacturing sites in this fictive company, China, Germany, USA, and they track carbon emissions by country, by product. They track uh, megawatt hours, electricity con consumption. And uh, for example, here is a bar chart by product. Uh, we can drill down by selecting uh, one of the products. Uh, I can expand here and we see that uh, we see two KPIs uh, uh, by month how Axel uh, shaft standard is created. Next, we will uh, jump up to probably one of the most important uh, KPIs in sustainability that is greenhouse gas emissions, scope one. Uh, you, you see three gra graphs from left to right. First one is for scope one, second for scope two and scope three. Uh, here we, uh, and the scope one have the bar chart, which is, uh, uh, again, we can drill down uh, by manufacturing site. But for example, in this uh, graph, it is different from scope two. And I will quickly show you how you can change by yourself. You just expand the model, expand the graph and switch to donut chart, apply settings. And here I, also, we'll save the layout so that this layout will uh, remain. And now I have the same donut chart just for scope one as uh, in scope two. This is kind of easier to, to, to follow uh, the data. I can see that in scope one, China manufacturing site uh, has the uh, biggest amount of uh, CO2 emissions. And whereas in scope two, uh, the USA manufacturing side has probably bigger uh, GHG scope too, and Germany is probably a, a little side, so that's why it's uh, the least amount of emissions. But uh, on the scope three, uh, again, I see the graph, which is not uh, in line with other scope uh, emissions. So quickly, I will show you how you can change not only the graph itself, the donut, we can change a dimension from category uh, to plant. Again, always we have with drill down possibilities and to change the graph like I want for scope two. I just go to chart type, I change pi, and then I need to go to dimensions. And instead of category, I will choose plant. And then change drill down uh, capabilities because still I want to see everything by uh, category. Once I click on the manufacturing side, apply the changes, go to the layout and save the layout so everyone else could see it. And now if I click on China manufacturing site, for example, I will see it's uh, uh, split by categories, this scope free emission split. So this is how you can customize your graphs, whatever you see and all this is uh, sample content, uh, reporting part. Uh, one more um, 
cool graph is how you can follow the allocation process, how allocations are going. Here we see this Sankey chart from left to right. We start from uh, plants, then CO2 emissions are allocated to scopes, scope one, scope two, scope three, and life cycle stage in the end, it's allocated to two of those products. So you can visually see how everything looks like uh, from plant to your product. And of course, everything needs to be calculated so that the model could uh, handle these calculations. This is the Sankey chart for CO2 emissions. And we have another chart uh, for megawatt hours, electricity consumption. And from this, uh, this is very similar, uh, the same dimensions, just allocating the uh, only electricity. And we can see that China and USA manufacturing sites are using the most of electricity and Germany the least. What else? You can save these uh, reports in PDF files. You can embed it to web page and share with the public. Mm, the good thing, once you run all the calculations, graphs are updated. So you can update it uh, every month uh, or every quarter. Every time you have new data, you can update and have updated sustainability report in, uh, in your web page. And uh, I noticed that uh, sustainability people also like text. So when we issue the uh, sustainability report, they also want to have uh, explanation and a lot of text what is, uh, what is done inside the organization. Okay, we don't have too much time. I will quickly jump to what if simulations. Before that, I will also show one more cool thing that you can actually create your own uh, charts. So I created the additional page and on the left, you can see the drag and drop interface, the way you can design uh, some of the, some things are prepared and all this, what you see on the left is prepared by modelers. You need to have uh, to be that it will be prepared and then somebody in the reporting uh, team or just a sustainability manager can drag and drop those graphs inside the pages and basically create uh, their own report. They can create text as well and etc. But all this has to be prepared in modeling part where we'll, uh, I will show you that part later. And again, of course, you can share you, your customized report, whatever you created in, in a PDF. And now I will show you how the, the what if simulation works. So this company uh, has uh, two what if simulations. Uh, I will quickly maybe pause a little bit the video and explain you. Uh, this graph on the left is the base scenario. It is uh, scope one, scope two, scope three, how it is calculated right now. On the right side of the graph, we see the same graph and currently it has same values as the base case scenario. And later I will just change the um, parameters and show you uh, how the model recalculates live the result and shows you, shows you the data, how it would look like uh, before implementing any changes. And all these are carbon emissions in tons of CO2. So here uh, on the left side, we have two uh, parameters and you are considering energy mix, uh, whether to switch to renewable energy and you can see what happens. You just apply and simulate. Simulation is going, simulation is done. And we see that scope two is reduced significantly, of course. And then you can change another parameter uh, to choose your delivery mode from truck to truck plus train. So introduce train. And of course, it's uh, impacting uh, only scope three since these are deliveries. 
that's how you kind of, if you're choosing, you know, which of the initiative to uh, implement for the next year, renewable energy or to implement trains, you can decide uh, by running simulations. And of course, again, those parameters need to be uh, feed in into the model. And here is another what if simulation. It also worked based on uh, our parameter changes. This is all what I want to quickly show you on.